Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Uh, thanks for watching the video today. So what we're doing today is uh, we're going to start addressing this uh, leaky transmission uh, output or tail shaft, whatever you want to call it, out, out shaft, output or tail shaft, either one. Uh, I usually refer to it as a tail shaft seal. You got a bushing in there too. Uh, first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to get it up, get the car up secured safely. Uh, safety first from doing anything underneath the car like this. I'm sure everybody's seen the video a Guy popping drive shaft off and the car rolled off uh, So we got to get the back tires up off the ground. Uh, I got I got on the ramps We're gonna get the back end up. We're gonna put it on some blocks and uh, Some jack stands too just to be safe But uh, let's go ahead and get that started And we'll get uh, started taking this drive shaft out All right, so we got we got a jack stand here. I got the rear end under a block with a block of wood on it. And then just for sake measures, I left my bumper jack in. The tires are off the ground on both sides. And yeah, I still use the bumper jack. So we'll give it We'll give it a safety shake just to make sure. Yeah. All right, it ain't gonna go nowhere there. We're good to go. I'm going to uh, got a piece of cardboard here to lay on so I'm not laying in the gravel. First thing we gotta do is start taking the bolts out of the uh, flange there to drop this drive shaft I think it was a 12 point half inch if memory serves me correctly so that's uh let's get our tools to get started on it all right so the game plan here is going to be I'm going to get these three bolts out here and then I'm gonna put the transmission in neutral, spin it around so I can get that top one, and then I'll put it back in park so I can actually turn it. Ooh. A half inch might be a little loose, it might be metric. Oh, yeah, 12 millimeter fits much better. There's one. There's two. Ow. Three. All right, let's spin the transmission around. All right. One more. All 
And now we should be able to push it forward and lower it on out. I'm gonna try to get a think we'll be able to get this on camera, I don't think. <clears throat> Might get a pry bar. So uh, pry bar screwdriver, same difference. So the drive shaft's out. And here it is. And you can see right here where the uh, bushing is making contact. We're gonna put this in the shop just for safekeeping so it don't get wet or rusted or anything out here. Let's stick it right here for now. Here. Just so it don't get dirty. I don't want to get no... I'm working on gravel, so I don't want to get no gravel down there in the input shaft. Alright, I'll rearrange the cardboard. And I'm going to get a flashlight and we'll take a look at this uh, seal. See if we can get a good look at the bushing. Hopefully that bushing's not bad. Alright, so we're underneath here. can't really see the bushing because of the input shafts but that seal is most definitely bad I can see where there's rubber missing up there about 12 to 2 o'clock or no that's not rubber that's the metal part of the seal I can't tell it's too dark in here all right let's try it I'm leaving a lot of glare on my Right, so I think the best thing to do is we'll go ahead and get a pry bar or screwdriver and try to get in you gotta get in here behind this lip and try to drive this seal out and we'll take a take a screwdriver and a small hammer and just try to knock it out and we'll try to knock it out one piece so we can get a good look at it alrighty let me go get the tools all right, so I got my screwdriver, got my hammer. Anytime you're using your screwdriver like this for a chisel or a, your hammer on it, you wanna make sure you use the best screwdriver you got. That way you can break the end of it off and make it, render it useless after that. But <laughs> I'm joking, of course, I got an old wore out. This looks like this used to be a paint stirring screwdriver. So we'll use this one. That's what I thought. It's just gonna bend it. Yep, that's perfect. I'll try not to hit this housing here because I don't want to damage it.
toes. I don't know if I got that on camera or not, but it came out. And I covered myself in fluid. I got transmission fluid all over me when that thing popped up. It went everywhere. So at first glance, This seal doesn't look that bad to me. It is a little hard, but it's got the it's got the spring in it, so I don't think that the tension is an issue. Focus. That right there is what I was seeing. I thought rubber was missing, but that's the that's the metal part. It's. I don't know. It may be the bushing because that seal doesn't look bad to me. It's usually your seals go bad. They're hard and they're cracked. This is still really pliable. It's not cracked. Uh, the spring's still in it. I was thinking maybe the spring got knocked out of it. And so this may not be an easy fix. This may be a. Have to pull that tail shaft out and replace that bushing. I'm gonna crawl under here and see if I can't get a better look at that uh, bushing now that the seal's out of the way. All right, so this uh, I'm looking at this bushing and it's very similar to a cam baron. You can see right there, there's a thin spot where the brass is showing, and then there's another spot. If I can get the light on it. There's another spot over here on this side. I can't, there it is. You can see it right there. The, there's like a ring with the... I don't... I don't know if that's a, enough to cause that bad of a leak or not. I mean, it doesn't... I don't know, it doesn't look that bad to me. Uh, I guess I just need to put a tail shaft in there and a yoke in there and just kind of wiggle it around and see how much play there is. But I'm not getting this on camera. Maybe if I just turn this off and turn the flash on the camera on, it'll make it a little bit better. Yeah, you can see it a lot better now. So there's a spot right there. You can see the brass in the In the bushing but this is just like a can burn it's got the the babbit material on it right there's a spot that's pretty thin hmm. i don't know yeah right there you can see see the brass spot i think uh, i think i'm gonna need a bushing to get this uh, tail shaft off i gotta take these bolts right here out there's one, two, there's one right there, and there's a couple on the top, way up in there. I don't know that I'm able to get this out without pulling the whole transmission out. Let's see if, this is dirty. Get that out of there. Yeah, right there's one on top. I have another transmission I can slide out and look exactly where they're at. I've already got the speed armor cable hooked to unhooked. All right, for the sake of seeing how loose this uh, bushing is, I got the drive shaft back. I'm gonna slide it in there and just see how much it wiggles around. Let's see, get this thing keyed right.
Oh yeah, it's pretty loose. Come on, focus. I don't know if y'all can see it or not, but it's pretty loose. I'm wondering if I didn't short my drive shaft a little too far. I wonder if it ain't supposed to be about right there. Oh yeah, it don't matter, it's still loose there too. All right. Get bush and shot. I think our first plan of action would be is to take this off, this cross member. And then we'll take the transmission support out. Maybe I can lower it down enough to get to those top bolts. Now there's only one way to find out. Let's do it. All right, let's get started on it. I got, got all my tools out here. I'll start, start lowering it down. I'll get the bolts out of it and I'll support it. I'll have to find a jack. I forgot to put a washer on that one. We're gonna work in a crisscross pattern here. I may have to end up unhooking this exhaust too. on that one either. Oh yeah, it's coming down already. I'm gonna have to get a jack. Or a jack stand. I don't know if you don't see what I'm doing, but getting a jack to support the transmission. Anytime you're doing this, make sure you use a block of wood or something the full length of the pan. You don't want to punch a hole through the pan. Just going to very carefully support it. Almost there. All right, so the holes are lined back up, so it dropped that much. So hopefully, just hopefully, we'll have enough to be able to get this uh, top bolt out. Let's go ahead and drop his cross member. I'm getting, I'm waiting to get a drip pan. I'm getting transmission fluid everywhere. Oh, 
All right, so all the all the cross member bolts are out. with my washer and my nuts so I don't lose it. That's a 9 16th. So I'm not sure if you can see all that on camera or not, but I was gonna show you this. This is my favorite extension right here. I got, it's got like a little built-in uh, swivel on it so you can click it all the way in and it's straight or you can pop it halfway and then it swivels. I don't know if you can see that on the uh, getting that uh, transmission dampener bolt out but that come in handy with that this is my favorite extension I have no idea it don't have a brand on it I've had it forever but that's a that's a neat little extension I use that thing a lot all right so we got all the uh, we got the cross member out I got the uh, I'm all over the jack down we got the these bottom two studs I'm gonna try to get out and then I'll work my way up top and then uh, I gotta get a catch pan to try to catch some of this transmission fluid because I'm sure a bunch of it's gonna dump out. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and get started on this. So, I don't know if you're gonna see this or not, but this is gonna be a 9 16th, so I'm not gonna be able to get a lot of this on camera. I'm probably gonna have to use my little fancy extension again. These top bolts, I'm gonna have to. Yep, I got fluid coming out already. Let me go catch it. Ooh, there's a lot. That's a lot. Let me go get a catch pan. So I'm gonna try to catch as much of this as I can because I'd like to be able to reuse it. This stuff's expensive, and I've done this about four times now. Filling her up. Yeah, it would have been a lot on the ground if I thought. I knew I was gonna have to get one. But we're gonna put this back in that red bottle and try to put it back in the car because I don't want to replace all this again. I'll let all this drain out and then I'll take the rest of them bolts out.
kind of hard to get to. It's back here, but it should pump free now, hopefully. We got some more fluid coming out. All right, so I missed a step. I got to uh, take this off, and there's a snap ring in there. Once I get that snap ring out, it'll slide off. All the bolts are out. I just got to get that snap ring out. We'll try to try to get that done. I need a Phillips to get these out, I and mean, then the snap ring should be right there. Right. Ooh, it's tight. So now we can get to it. Looks like there's a gasket to go back in there that we'll have to replace. That's okay. All right, let's get the flashlight. Let's see what size snap ring this is. I need the flat one, of course. I don't have one. We got it. We'll have to come up here and clean this gasket off and put a new gasket down here. Here's our parking brake lever. We got to clean all this. All that off. Put a new gasket. All right, let's take a look at this uh, bushing now that it's out. All right, I got all that gasket cleaned off. Looks a lot better now. Now let's go work on the bushing and get the bushing out. All right, so here it is. You can see. I don't know if camera's getting it or not, but it is bad. It's got a pretty pretty significant uh, groove right there so now I'm gonna drive this out and uh, get the new one all right so this is an inch and a quarter and it looks like a winner to me it's gonna sit right on that lip without hopefully and hopefully not hit the housing. Let's give it a few taps and we'll see, see if it starts driving it out. There's the old bushing. And there is a uh, there's an old groove right there that that hole lines up with. So it has to go back in just like it right there. I say getting it back in straight without boogering this edge up it's going to be a lot harder than getting it out because you want to get it in there like that right there straight 
and you can see that heavy groove where that thing is wore out. It's a uh, you can you can see now just how much play is in this thing. If you, know, you can really see it now. now. Ain't no wonder it was leaking. There's no way just the seal would have fixed that. So I feel like we done the right thing. It wasn't that much extra work. Uh, I'm glad that I was able to get it out without without removing the whole transmission. I was a little concerned about taking that tail housing off, but those bolts wasn't that bad to get to once I lowered the transmission down. I lowered it down about two inches and it come right out. So it wasn't that bad. Um, that's about as far as I can go today. I got to order a new bushing, a new seal, and a uh, gasket kit for that tail shaft. And we'll finish this one up later on. I appreciate you watching. I hope this helps somebody. Um, I apologize for the the camera work. It was uh, just have to set the camera down and do the best I can. But uh, I I know it's gonna be blurry in some spots because I got transmission fluid all over my phone. The lens is kind of dirty. But uh, my hands are dirty from touching the phone. So uh, I appreciate you watching. I hope this helps. I'll see you next time.